for for at the, for people that don't know in your family, because uh, there's an interview that one of his sons did years ago. I think ten years ago, one of uh, Osama bin Laden's sons uh, did an interview while he was still alive, saying, uh, "My father's not even the most dangerous one. He's not even the most ruthless ones. You, there, there's f- people that are way more ruthless than he is." What did you know about the? potential and the vision of your uncle like what was the vision did you know it or was it just kind of like a quiet thing well you know you don't need to know what they're up to you don't need to know what they're doing and your father kind of defended him meaning talking to your mother or your father kind of defended him what 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 vision did you guys have of who your uncle was pre 9-11 so as I mentioned my mother was very much in the know in terms of understanding the mentality of the society, but also those who were extremely devout and practiced Islam in its literal form. She was able to observe, you know, such people in Saudi Arabia. And the fact that, you know, there was the divorce, the separation and the divorce case in the background. And she was obviously looking out for her three girls, you know, it was just the four of us in the West with this, in this very strange situation. And, you know, my mother always looked out for us and following the events, you know, the 1993, well, from, you know, when uh, Osama uh, went to Afghanistan and his activities in the eighties. And then in 1993, the first bombings in the basement of the World Trade Center and then the 1998 bombings in the embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. So she'd she'd been following this very closely because she knew that it wasn't going to stop even though she didn't know obviously the plans um, or what was going to happen, but she knew that he was never going to stop and she was very fearful for the consequences that that could have for me and my two older sisters considering the name that we carry. And as you said, you know, Osama bin Laden is one of thousands of very radical, or I would call them literal Muslims, the Muslims who really believe in a literal application of the ideology. And my mother again, you know, alludes to this, or not alludes, but you know, pin, pinpoints it in her in her book, especially in the final chapters, where she calls them, you know, the army of shadows, because there are so many. And she was actually, you know, one of the first to make this analogy of, you know, if you take the whole Muslim population, which at the time, you know, was one one billion or so, and you take ten percent. And you take the 10% of these 10% of the more, you know, devout ones. And then you arrive at a number. If you take the ones that are willing to commit these atrocious atrocious crimes and um, killing themselves, even themselves in the process for their uh, beliefs, you know, you arrive at a number which is over a million people, which is (laughs) non-negligible, obviously. And sadly, everything that my mother predicted in the book, you know, warning where she warned the West of this army of shadows and how they were infiltrating our society. Tragically, it, it has come to pass and we're living with the consequences here in the West ever since. I mean, I'm based in Europe and the climate here is extremely tense, whether you're in France or in Germany, in Sweden, in in um, the Netherlands, Austria, the the amounts of, you know, attacks, it's just relentless, you know, in France, the past month has been, you know, Mm -hmm. absolute bloodshed. And, um, and the media doesn't really, you know, for 20 years, the media didn't really talk about it or covered it up. And you had some brave, brave voices who called it out, you know, including my mother saying, you know, that this is a real problem. This ideology is a real problem. And in the meantime, we were watching the news and looking at the press and some politicians 
saying that you know Islam is a religion of peace, perpetrating that narrative, as opposed to you know, in French there's this, there's this expression calling a cat a cat, you know, naming something what it is what it is, right? And um, the situation here is is quite bleak. I mean, not to sound negative or or pessimistic, I'm quite an optimistic person, but the reality, the reality here in Europe, and you know, people don't want to talk about this because apparently you get labeled as a racist if you say these things, but just the mere demographics here in Europe, the landscape in the next 30, 40, 50 years will be very different to the Europe that we know that we know today and nobody is really talking about this, but it's something we really need to look out for the sake of our future generations here in you Europe. Know, there, there's a lot of, th and by the way, when you said the, the Muslim is a religion of peace, that politician you mentioned is a president. He's a two-term president that you were mentioning. I believe you were- uh, There are two presidents. There's George Bush who said that, there's Barack Obama who said that, and um, the whole, press, the mainstream media, right. all of the mainstream media yeah. perpetrated that narrative um, for the past, you know, 20 years. What's, what's impressive covered this is, up. do you follow Bill Maher? Do you follow Bill Maher at all or no? Uh, yes. It, it, the one thing impressive about Bill Maher is when he came down to the, even though he's a very, very uh, uh, far left uh, 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 Democrat himself, he, he was not on in the same camp as the rest of them when it came down to the topic of Islam. But let me get back to a couple of things. You said the, the army of shadow, if you take 1% of the billion uh, Muslims at the time, that's 10 million, you take 10% of them, that's 1 million. That's 1 million that's willing to go to extreme measures to do whatever they can to represent their religion, religion which makes me think, because I grew up in Iran, I lived in Iran 10 years, so uh, uh, I'm one that escaped Iran and went to a refugee camp in Germany. So I remember what it was like as a kid growing up there.